Let's begin the example to our first question. And question number one states, a multinational corporation is implementing security measures to safeguard its intellectual property. The organization stores proprietary software source code on servers, and the IT team is tasked with ensuring that only authorized developers can access this sensitive information. Which security control would be the most effective in preventing unauthorized access to the source code? Is it A, firewalls? Is it B, two-factor authentication or 2FA? Is it C, intrusion prevention systems or IPS? Is it D, encryption, or is it D, security awareness training? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is B, two-factor authentication, or 2FA. Two-factor authentication requires users to provide two forms of identification before granting access, adding an extra layer of security. In this scenario, it ensures that even if a username and a password are compromised, an additional authentication factor is needed to access the proprietary source code. And now for the incorrect answers, firewalls, option A, primarily control network traffic, not access to specific data. Intrusion prevention systems, option C, can detect and prevent specific attacks, but may not directly act, uh, address access control to source code. And encryption, option D, protects data confidentiality but does not directly control user access. Security awareness training, option E, is essential but it does not offer the same level of access control as 2FA. And for the next question of our exam, question number two. And the question states, a small startup company is developing a mobile app that will handle sensitive customer data, including personally identifiable information, or PII. The development team wants to implement security measures from the beginning to protect the app and its users. Which fundamental security concepts should the team prioritize during the app's design and development? Is it A, least privilege? Is it B, defense in depth? Is it C, secure by design? Is it D, security through obscurity? Or is it E, role-based access control, or RBAC? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is C, secure by design. Secure by design emphasizes integrating security measures into the initial design phase of a system. In the context of a mobile app, this approach involves considering security aspects from the outset, ensuring that potential vulnerabilities are addressed early in the development cycle. And now for the incorrect answers, least privilege, option A, is important but focuses on restricting access based on job roles, not initial design. Defense in depth option B involves layered security controls, which is crucial but doesn't specifically address design co considerations. Security through obscurity option D is not a recommended practice. Security should not rely on keeping systems details secret. And role-based access control option E is relevant, but it's more about access control during operation than design. And for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, a financial institution is planning a major software update for its online banking system. The update includes new features and security patches. The IT team is, in cons is concerned about potential disruptions and security risks associated with the update. Which aspect of change management is most critical to address these concerns? Is it A, rollback procedures? Is it B, stakeholder communication? Is it C, regular auditing? Is it D, emergency changes? Or is it D, impact analysis? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is E, impact analysis. Impact analysis assesses the potential effects of changes on the security and functionality of existing systems. For a major software update in a critical system like online banking, understanding the impact is crucial to mitigate potential security risks and ensure a smooth transition. And now for the incorrect answers, rollback procedures, option A, are important, but are a contingency measure rather than a proactive step in managing impact. Stakeholder communication, option B, is essential for transparency but does not directly address security impact. Regular auditing, option C, is an ongoing process not specific to the change management phase. And emergency changes, option D, should be minimized and their impact must be carefully assessed, making impact analysis critical. And for the next question of our exam, question number four. And the question states, a healthcare organization is transmitting electronic health records, or EHR, between hospitals over a public network. The organization is concerned about the confidentiality of patient information during transmission. Which cryptographic solution is the most suitable for securing the EHR data? 
Is it A, hash functions? Is it B, digital certificates? Is it C, public key infrastructure or PKI? Is it D, symmetric encryption? Or is it E, asymmetric encryption? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is E, asymmetric encryption. Asymmetric encryption uses a pair of keys with one key used for encryption and the other for decryption in the context of transmitting EHR data. This ensures that only authorized recipients with the corresponding private key can decrypt and access the sensitive information. And now for the incorrect answers, hash functions, option A, are used for data integrity, not confidentiality. Digital certificates, option B, are a part of PKI and they are used for authentication, not directly encryption. Public key infrastructure, PKI option C, is a framework for managing keys but doesn't directly handle encryption. And symmetric encryption option D could be used but require key distribution which can be challenging over a public network. And for the next question about exam, question number five. And the question states, a technology company specializing in artificial intelligence research and development has experienced a series of cyber attacks aimed at stealing its proprietary algorithms and source code. The attacks appear sophisticated and the company suspects that they are involved in a well-funded entity. What category of threat actor is most likely responsible for these targeted attacks? Is it A, script kiddies? Is it B, competitors? Is it C, insiders? Is it D, nation states? Or is it E, cyber criminal organizations? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is D, nation states. Nation states often engage in cyber espionage to gain a competitive advantage in areas such as technology and research. Their sophisticated attacks, significant resources, and specific focus on proprietary information make them likely culprits and target attacks against the technology's company's intellectual property. And now for the incorrect answers, script kiddies, option A, lack the resource and motivation for such targeted attacks. Competitors, option B, could be a possibility, but may not have the same level of sophistication and resources as nation states. Insiders, option C, may have access, but may not conduct attacks with the same level external focus. And cyber, uh, cyber criminal organizations, option E, typically target financial gain rather than specific intellectual property theft. And for the next question of our exam, question number six. And the question states, a global e-commerce company is concerned about potential threats to its customer database. The organization wants to implement a security control that specifically focuses on monitoring and blocking malicious activities such as SQL injection attacks and cross-site scripting. Which security control is most suitable for addressing these concerns? Is it A. Antivirus software? Is it B. Web application firewall or WAF? Is it C. Network intrusion detection system or NIDS? Is it D, Data Loss Prevention, or DLP? Or is it E, Security Information and Event Management, SIEM? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is B, Web Application Firewall, or WAF. A web application firewall, or WAF, is specifically designed to monitor and filter HTTP traffic between a web application and the Internet, protecting against various web-based attacks, including SQL injection and cross-site scripting. It acts as a barrier between the web application and the Internet, blocking malicious activities before they reach the application. And now for the incorrect answers, antivirus software, option A, is more focused on detecting and preventing malware on devices. Network Intrusion Detection Systems, or NIDS, option C, monitors network traffic for suspicious activities but may not be tailored to web application threats. Data Loss Prevention, DLP, option D, is concerned with protecting sensitive data from being leaked. And Security Information and Event Management, or SIEM, option E, is a broader solution for collecting and analyzing security event data. And for the next question of our exam, question number seven. And the question states, a large financial institution is reevaluating its user access policies to enhance security. The organization wants to ensure that users have the minimum level of access necessary to perform their job function functions. Which fundamental security concept aligns with this principle? Is it A, least privilege? Is it B, defense in depth? Is it C, security through obscurity? Is it D, zero thrust? Or is it E, single sign on or SSO? Choose one answer in our five seconds.
and the correct answer is A, least privilege. Least privilege is the principle of providing individuals with the minimum level of access needed to perform their job functions. By limiting access to the essential requirements, organizations can reduce the risk of unauthorized access and potential misuse of privileges. And now for the incorrect answers, defense in depth. Option B involves using multiple layers of security controls. Security through obscurity. Option C relies on keeping system details secret, which is not a best, best practice. Zero, uh, zero trust or option D is a security model that assumes no entity, whether inside or outside the organization, should be trusted by default. And single sign-on or SSO, option E, is a convenience feature allowing users to log in once and access multiple systems but is not directly related to least privilege. And for the next question of our exam, question number 8. And the question states, a healthcare organization is planning to implement a critical software update for its electronic health record, or EHR system. The IT team is concerned about potential impact on patient data accessibility and system availability. Which aspect of change management process is the most crucial in this situation? Is it A, stakeholder communication? Is it B, rollback procedures? Is it C, emergency changes? Is it D, regular auditing? Or is it E, impact analysis? And choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is E, impact analysis. Impact analysis is crucial in change management processes as it assesses the potential effects of changes on the security and functionality of existing systems. For a critical software update in a healthcare setting, understanding the impact of patient data accessibility and system availability is essential to prevent unintended consequences. And now for the incorrect answer, stakeholder communication, option A, is important but doesn't directly address the potential impact on security. Rollback procedures, option B, are essential but are typically used after an undesired impact has occurred. Emergency changes, option C, should be minimized and their impact must be carefully assessed. And regular auditing, option D, is an ongoing process and not specific to the change management phase. And for the next question of our exam, question number 9. And the question states, a technology company is developing a secure communication channel between its research and development teams located in different geographical locations. The company wants to ensure the confidentiality of the exchanged research documents. Which cryptographic solution is most suitable for achieving this goal? Is it A, hash functions? Is it B, digital signatures? Is it C, symmetric encryption? Is it D, public key infrastructure or PKI? Or is it E, secure sockets layer or SSL? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is C, symmetric encryption. Symmetric encryption uses a single key for both encryption and decryption. It is well suited for ensuring the confidentiality of exchanged documents in a secure communication channel. As long as the key remains confidential, the information remains protected. And now for the incorrect answers, hash functions or option A are used for data integrity, not confidentiality. Digital signatures option B provide authentication and verify the integrity of a message, but do not directly encrypt the content. Public key infrastructure or PKI option D involves asymmetric encryption and key management, which might be more complex than needed for secure communications between teams. And secure sockets layer or SSL option E is a protocol that provides secure communication over a computer network but it is typically associated with securing web com connections and may not be directly related to ensure confidentiality in the described scenario. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. But before that, ladies and gents, make sure you drop a sub and share this video with your friends. And now back to our question. A large retail company has experienced a series of cyber attacks aimed at stealing customer credit information stored in its database. The attacks appear financially motivated and the com company suspects that the involvement of a group seeking financial gain. What category of threat actor is most likely responsible for these attacks? Is it A. Nation states? Is it B. Cyber criminal organizations? Is it C. Hacktivists? Is it D. Insiders? Or is it E. Script kiddies? Choose one answer in our five seconds. The answer is B, cyber criminal organizations. Cyber criminal organizations are often motivated by financial gain and their attacks may target valuable information such as credit card data for fraudulent transactions. Their activities are characterized by a systematic approach to extracting financial benefits from their targets. 
And now for the incorrect answers, nation states, option A, are more likely to engage in espionage or politically motivated attacks. Option C, hacktivists, are motivated by ideological or social causes and may not prioritize financial gain. Insiders, option D, have insider knowledge but may not fit the profile of financially motivated attacks. And script kiddies or option E, typically lack the sophistication and motivation for targeted attacks seeking financial information. Ladies and gents, this is the end of our exam. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you guys next time.